Hi guys, welcome to the video on net foreign debt and net foreign liabilities. Um, if a country has these things get out of control, it can sometimes feel like the country is drowning. That's the closest I can get to uh, context for this beachy wavy thing that I just thought was cool. Um, all right, so net foreign debt and net foreign liabilities. We're gonna go through this video and split out the two components. Um, just as a bit of context here, um, in our definition of the goal of strong and sustainable economic growth, you've got that element of external stability, which is in there. And that's exactly what these two things, if they're managed well, will achieve. It will achieve stability in the external sector, which is overseas. So just a little bit of context there as we go into it. So let's go. Okay, the first one here, net foreign debt. Okay, so we're gonna start talking about net foreign debt. And when you're talking about net foreign debt, the key idea here is money. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys some key ideas to distinguish between net foreign debt and net foreign equity. And for net foreign debt, your key idea is money. Okay, so what is net foreign debt? Well, you take the total money that Australia borrows from overseas, and you take away the total money that Australia lends to overseas. Okay, so the total money that we borrow, and then you take away the total money lent, and then that gives you the net foreign debt. And that word net just kind of means one thing minus another. What's the balance? Okay, so this balance here, or this net number, is the total money that Australia is owed or the total money that Australia owes once you cancel those two things out. I'm gonna go through um, what that looks like a little bit later. Now, this number can be represented uh, as a number. Yeah, one thing here, you know, when you've got here, total money borrowed minus total money lent. Okay, so that's like a, it's a calculation. So you're gonna end up with a number, all right? Um, and uh, we're gonna go through that in a minute. What transactions are recorded here? This is just the borrowing and lending of money internationally. All right, so um, in your study design, it'll say the composition, which is what's in it, and then that's what this bit down here is, okay? The borrowing and lending of money internationally. Okay, so let's go through what this looks like. So total money borrowed, okay, and total money lent. If the total money borrowed is bigger than the total money lent, well, that means that we are owed more money, sorry, we owe more money than we are owed. We have borrowed more than we have lent, all right? And if that's the case, if that number on the left-hand side there is the bigger number, well, our net foreign debt will be positive, okay? Just basic maths. If the number that comes first in a, in a subtraction is bigger, then you're gonna end up with a positive number. Now, if the total money lent here, the money that we're lending overseas countries, and when I say where, that's a combination of individual people, um, businesses, banks, and government, it's everything. And if the total money lent is bigger, as in we're lending money to overseas um, people more than what we're borrowing, then net foreign debt number will be negative. Right, so basic subtraction maths again. In uh, subtraction, if the second number is bigger than the first, well, you're gonna end up with a negative number. there. So let's have a look and see what this actually looks like in real life. Okay, so here's a little trend graph showing um, the net foreign debt position, which is money. Okay, and as, as we track along here, we look at our axes and you can see these are all positive numbers. So what I want you guys to do is pause the video have a look at how net foreign debt is calculated. And I want you to make a prediction on whether the net, yeah, one minus the other, the net foreign debt, well, we know it's a positive number, okay, because it's above the zero line. So you need to make a prediction now. Do we, have we borrowed more money than we've lent? Or have we lent more money than we've borrowed? So pause the video, go back if you need to. Don't move on until you've made a uh, prediction. All right, let's have a look. So our current or latest data that we've got here is Australia has a net foreign debt position of positive $1.14 trillion. Okay, now as we said before, if it's a positive number, then this um, number here has to be bigger, doesn't it? Total money borrowed 
has to be bigger than total money lent. So as a result, we owe more money than we are owed. Okay, we have borrowed more money than we have lent to overseas um, countries. And as a result, we have a positive number. And the reason why it's a positive number is, well, when you look at the heading here, it says net foreign debt. It's saying how much debt do we have? Well, we have this much debt. We owe other countries this much money. Other countries who are net lenders, like Japan or Germany, for example, um, they will have a net foreign debt number that is negative because they lend out more money than they borrow. Interestingly here, we're gonna make a little connection to the balance of payments. Um, and uh, countries who have a, net, a, a negative net foreign debt position, well, how do they get all that money? Well, generally speaking, because they had a current account surplus and they use that money to then lend out, which then is recorded as a, de as a debit on the um, capital and financial account and recorded as a negative here, all right? But in Australia, we traditionally, as you can see here, have a very large um, $1.14 trillion um, international debt. This does not include uh, money that has been borrowed within Australia's borders, okay? This whole outcome, don't forget, is just the overseas stuff. So you can see here we have net borrowed $1.14 trillion once you've taken out the money um, that we have lent to other countries in that position. Go over that particular section on net foreign debt if um, you need to cover off anything. We're gonna move on to net foreign equity. Now, if net foreign debt was all about money, net foreign equity is all about assets, okay? This is all about assets. So what is this calculation? Well, this is Australian assets owned by overseas, taken away the overseas assets that are owned by Australians, okay? And you can see down the bottom there what transactions are recorded here. It's just the buying of selling of assets internationally. And the easiest ones I want you to think about are companies and shares. So if we had an Australian company like Qantas, for example, um, and uh, there was an American investor who bought shares in that particular Australian company, well, that's gonna be, make this number here bigger, okay? Because that's gonna be an Australian asset that is now owned by overseas. Conversely, if you were to buy shares in Apple, the, the American company, then that would be an overseas asset owned by Australians. That would go over here. And then what net foreign equity is, is just the, the calculation here of adding up all of the Australian assets that are owned by overseas people and companies. And then you take away all the overseas assets that we own, okay? And then this gives you the total assets that are owed or owing. Yeah? And why you say, well, what are we, what are we owed? What are we owing here? Well, when you buy an asset, whether it's domestically or from overseas, you're going to expect a return on that investment, usually in the form of dividends or profits. So when, you, um, when an overseas investor buys an Australian asset, well, we have an, an obligation to them in the future. Yeah, we kind of owe them something, don't we? They've given us money in the form of buying shares or investing in our company. And we've got to kind of pay that back. And so we kind of owe them in the terms of future financial performance and returns. So what does this look like in Australia? Oh, so sorry, just to double check here. So if um, the number on the left here is bigger, um, overseas owns more than AU owns, okay? And the net foreign equity number will be positive. Or, if the right-hand side number is bigger, the net result is Australia owns more overseas assets than overseas owns more of Australian assets. It's a really, really tricky concept, so please feel free to watch this one over and over. And if the number on the right is bigger, just because of that basic maths, net foreign equity number will be negative. So let's, let's now have a look at reality, what it is in Australia. Now, this chart is very, Simple, it's the best one I could find. I'm really sorry about that. It's not as pretty as the other one. But let's look at the trend line here for net foreign equity. And you'll see here's the zero point and we're below zero consistently here in Australia. 
So, based on what we learned in the prior slide here, what do you think is the bigger number here? Is there more Australian assets owned by overseas? Or is there more overseas assets owned by Australians? So I want you to pause the video, look at the chart here, and try to make a prediction on what's going on. And you'll see here that the latest data point shows us with a net foreign equity position, position of negative $250 billion. And so what does that mean? Well, after you take out the Australian assets owned by overseas people, Australia owns this much of overseas assets. Okay, so this right hand number is bigger because it's a negative net number. So what does that actually mean? Okay, well, we as a country own more overseas assets, more Apple, more Samsung, more Hewlett Packard. We own all these assets more so than overseas people own Qantas, own Harvey Norman, own, I don't know whether you can even own Harvey Norman, but you, you get what I mean. Now, what does that mean? Well, they are going to owe us things like profits and dividends much more than we're going to owe them profits and dividends. So as a result, that's why it's a negative number, because our net um, uh, obligation, if you like, is there's going to be more money coming in in the future than going out. And so that's why it's recorded as a negative. It comes off the net foreign debt. It's the opposite of the net foreign debt. Okay. If that didn't make sense, again, go back over it um, as many times as you need. Bonus round. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba! All right. So um, net foreign debt and net foreign equity have connections to the balance of payments like we talked about before. And I've got a couple of questions for you. So question one, where do you think net foreign debt, which is all about money, is recorded on the balance of payments? I want you to think of which side of the balance of payments and then which sub account of the balance of payments. So pause the video, look over your notes if you have to, and then get an answer. And the answer here is net other investments. Okay, sounds a bit weird, but the money stuff on the capital and financial account, yeah, goes into the other bucket. So when an Australian gets a loan from a German bank, for example, that's going to be, that's money coming in. So that's going to be reported as a credit in the other category of the capital and financial account. And then your next question is, where do you think net foreign equity is recorded on the balance of payments? Pause the video. Have a go. And if you said the capital and financial account, you would be correct. But on the capital and financial account, this could go into two areas, okay? It could go into direct investment, which is where you buy uh, the majority of, or more than 20% of the, the ownership of the company, or it could also go into portfolio investment, which is the same, but just less than 20%. So things like shares and stuff, okay? So net foreign equity is recorded in that area of the balance of payments. And whether it's money coming into the country or money leaving the country will depend on whether it is a credit or a debt. <sighs> Thanks, guys. Hopefully um, that made sense. It is only one key knowledge point here. It is very tricky to understand, but um, go over this video because there could be calculate questions in the exam um, or there could be tricky um, multiple choice classification questions or there might be a what is the effect on balance of payments, so on and so forth, when the net foreign equity position does this. So there's a lot going on in what is really uh, looks like a simple um, key knowledge point. Thanks, guys.